Amen. Praise the Lord this evening. God bless everyone tonight. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. We praise you. We welcome the new guys coming in out to our sanctuary. We want to bless you guys and make this your home and come and get what you came here to get. And that's walk with God. Hallelujah. Let's stand for prayer, please. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the honor. Let's get our hearts together tonight that we can worship our Lord and let's pray and let him touch our lives again. And it's such an opportunity to be closer to God tonight again. Father, we thank you once again, my Lord. Heavenly Father, we just bless your mighty name. That all that we know, Father, as humbly as we know how. Lord, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, my God, speaking to our hearts tonight. Bless the man of God as he comes forward, my King. Lord, let your mighty hand come upon us, Lord, let the fire from heaven, Lord, seep into that secret place in our hearts, Lord, that where you need to go, where we sometimes fight against you, my Lord. But you know all things, almighty God. Let tonight be a, a glorious night, a night of victory, a night, almighty Lord, where, where hearts surrender to you, Father God, and we become transformed into the, the likeness and the glory of Jesus Christ, Lord. That is, that is our desire tonight, Lord, that we touch hearts and that your word will have a free course tonight, my King. Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, behind closed doors. You're still God. You're still doing things, my Lord, and you're still in control. There's still power in the blood, almighty God, and it's the power of the cross, Lord. We just thank you, thank you, thank you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. I had a, um, Michelle, quick note. This morning we had a great uh, devotion. Pastor Wooden brought in a, a glimpse about what prayer is about. And as you guys know that I can't walk, right? So I was trying to go up the stairs to the back, trying to sneak up there quickly. And Brother Steve Law comes by and says, hey, jump on my back. I can have you up the stairs. And we chuckled about it, you know? At the same time, it hit me. I'm going up the stairs struggling. That's how we are, but we pray on Tuesday nights here. We carry each other on the back to go up to the mountain, to get to the throne, to get through the desert, to get through the valley, to get through the hard times, to get through the storm. Now, it's always the good times. Your friends are not there in the good times. Your friends got to be there when it's the hard times, when it's the bad times, when it's time you got to fight against the enemy, when it's time that you need a word, when it's time you want to worship God, when you really need help. That's how you know where your friends are. But we're the army of God and we stand tall. Amen? So Tuesday night prayer time, make it your business to be here. It's very important for me and it's important for you because I can carry you and then you can carry me. Amen? How's that? Y'all be blessed. Let's worship the Lord, Brother Steve. Take us to the throne. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All right. Let's turn to page 113, 113.
291.
comforter has come. That's the promise. God said, I should, I should never leave you nor forsake you. You know, throughout the generation, especially us Spanish folk, we got a little folk tale of who Jesus is. Maybe I can just drop this note to you tonight and let you know how much Jesus loves you. There was a five-year-old boy, five years old, ran to the pharmacy with a big bag of quarters. He said, sir, 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 I need you to do some miracles. My mother's sick. My mother said, they can tell me you could do miracles. And the man looked at him with sympathy and compassion. He says, I can't do no miracles, but Jesus can. Where do I find Jesus? Where do I find Jesus? He said, over there in that building. And the little boy grabbed his bag of quarters and ran to Jesus, ran to the church and pushed to the crowd and saw Jesus on the cross and looked at him. He says, he says, Jesus, 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 I need your help, I need your help. I got a bag of quarters, and this is for my bike, and I love my bike, but I love mama. I love mama. Mama say, can you do miracles for me? They told me you could do miracles, right? Why won't you answer me? Please help me, Jesus, please help me. I know you could do miracles. If you help me, I'll come back, and I'll help you come down from up there. See? That's your mama over there, right? If I go to your mama and ask her, don't you love your mama? Like I love my mother? And the pastor came out to church and looked at him. He said, son, what's wrong? My mama's sick, my mama's sick. And the pastor walked him home. He said, come on, let's walk home and see your mama. He left the back of quarters there, went home and walked in, opened the door, and everything was silent and quiet and clean. Bam, and mama comes out the kitchen. He says, mama, mama, you okay, you okay? He says, yes, yes. The good doctor came by and he healed me. And uh, he, he told me to tell you, yes, he does love his mama. And he left you the bike over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. God always hears our prayers. Mm-hmm. We come to him childlike, the true heart, no matter what the situation is. God will never leave us nor forsake us. He's true. So now we have prayer. Anybody want to raise their hand and give me at least one uh, testimony before we start prayer? What God has done today? Brother Joe uh, Perez, uh, I have a couple of co-workers. Mm-hmm. Amen. And then uh, a couple of guys to live with us, you know. Uh, it's private, so I want to respect the privacy of them. They're living in a deep, deep pain, you know. And some people, they have to work in a deep pain. Yes. So I just want to, we spoke about the, the promise of the Lord. He promised to send us the Holy Spirit, but he also promised to send his word to all of him and all the people that needs it. True. I think tonight's going to be a, a night of miracles. Absolutely. Thank you. I stand and agree with that. Tonight's tonight. Anybody else? Prayer? Brother Mike? Yeah, I just want to say a prayer for uh, Judd. He gets back in here. I see him earlier. Amen. We love you, Judd. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Amen. And Mama Judd. We all went down that road. Amen. Somebody answer that Jesus calling. Pray for the brother tonight as he brings the word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to pray for our pastor tonight as he brings the file from the pulpit. And just remember, and I never forget the day that I came through those doors. I also, I also too came in broken. Very. I try to hide it and masquerade a lot of things. Thank, thank God for these men of God who, who give their lives to serve Jesus. They helped me get through a lot of my life. I've been in four years now, Friday. Four years here, seven years clean. I look back at that and I just cry. I just don't know how any words to thank God and say thank you. God sees the best in us. And we gotta give God the best of us. Amen? Amen. There's somebody talking about him and we're gonna show the world that he's real in our lives. And that's why he brought us here. We all came in here broken, dysfunctional. And every other word that we could fit in there that's is us, and we have to deal with that. But we know that God sent the comforter, the excellent doctor for excellence, and this is the operating room. Let's submit, let's submit. You say, here Lord, take me, put me together, do it your way. 
the best way, the only way. Amen? Amen. Let's go pray for our families that are outside. Brothers coming in now to, to the Four Miles Rescue Mission. We'll pray for our pastors tonight. Each and every day we got to keep them upholded. They're going through a battle too. We're going to pray for our managers of each department, Brother Bob, Brother Steve, our, our laundry ministry. There's a lot in there. Um, pray for each other, Brother Steve. I'm on my 120th day of no drinking this month. Amen. 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 Woo. Glory. Give God the glory. There you go. Brother Black. Amen. Amen. Two more months will be a new year coming in. Don't forget that. For new year, let's renew our minds and renew our spirit to where the God says. Let's just give it up. Let's just give it up. We've been through a lot. We've been there. We've done that. But check this out. The things that should have happened to us didn't happen because of God's grace. God wouldn't allow that to give us one more chance. One more chance to be here. Not in prison. Not in a maximum, not in jail, not paying, uh, um, you know, um, parole or that stuff, and probation, and the hassle, and people look at you when life kicked you, kicked you out the door, when life kicked us in our teeth, when we gave up the towel, when we surrender, when we say no more, when we say it's time, and you want to do something that's really wrong, God said, hold up, I got, the, I, I got a formula for you. I have a solution for the pollution. It's called Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Submit. Taste it. Your love is the goodness of God. Let's pray for our families. And let's pray for today that the word of God would, would, would touch people's hearts. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask a special prayer for this city. But I found out today that Trump's going to be down there in Florida. Mm. And I don't think he's going to Let's pray for our president. Let's pray for our country in total. Let's just pray for humanity that, that, that God would. Amen. Amen. That God and his. Glory would, would, would extend his hand some more and, and give us another chance and more grace and abundant grace. Like Pastor said the other day, that abundant grace upon our country, that, 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 that things would change. Only God can change that. Only God. Yes, sir, Brother Steve. Yeah, my, my friend Tiffany Lyons that I prayed for, uh, I'd like okay. to continue to pray for her, but she just called me today and asked for prayer for her. Her nephew's girlfriend. She was in a car wreck Saturday, and she's on life support, so she's in bad shape. Her name is Skyler. I would appreciate prayer for her. Oh, amen. 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 Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely, my brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's stand for prayer, gentlemen. Let's give God the glory. Let's open our hearts to him. Let's make God glad and the devil mad. Make God true and the devil a liar. Pastor Jerome, will you take us to the throne, please? Most gracious Father, we we stand before Thank thee this you. evening, Lord, bless a humble Lord. people, a needy yes. people. Yes, my Lord. And blessed Father, we come, Lord, seeking thy help, seeking thy presence tonight. Lord. Yes, my Lord. And blessed Father, we're so grateful and thankful for Jesus Christ. Yes. We thank you for his faithfulness unto death. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, as you look down upon us, Lord. You see our needs, Lord. You see the cries of our hearts, Lord. And Brother Father, we're just asking that you send thy spirit tonight. We're asking, Lord, that your spirit will hover above us tonight for a little while. We're asking for that touch, Lord, that touch that only can come from you. Touch Brother Ledger tonight, Lord. We're asking for clarity of mind, clarity of thought, and clarity of speech, Lord. We're asking for that anointing, Father. That will give him power, Lord, to speak the word of truth, Lord, to speak your word, Lord. Oh, Lord, as your word comes forward, Lord, touching the hearts and minds of each and every one of us. And, Father God, we're so thankful and we appreciate each soul that is present tonight, Lord. And, Father, you know the need of each and every one of us tonight. We're asking, Lord, that you show us our hearts tonight. Let us see the deepest recesses of our heart, Lord. That dark place, that secret place, Lord. That place where we try to hide ourselves, Lord. And to hide our sins, Lord. But we need your revealing power, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you show us who we really are, Lord. That we may come to that place, Lord, where we may receive you as Savior and Lord. And blessed Father, we're asking, Lord, for that special healing touch, Lord. Reach down, Lord, and touch the bodies of those that are in need tonight. 
Lord, we're asking, Lord, to remove all the infirmities, whatever the need may be. And while you're touching and blessing the physical, Lord, we're asking for that spiritual touch. Oh, blessed Father, you know all about Scott. You know her need as well. Oh, blessed Father, reach down and touch Sky on tonight, Lord. Have your blessed way with you. Touch our family, Lord. Give them peace. Grant them comfort, Lord. Grant them rest. And for our extended church family, and we're so thankful and grateful to them, Lord. Continue to seek them out, Lord. Continue to bless and heal them, Lord. We're so grateful and thankful for Brother David and Sister Connie. Brother Doug, Lord Jesus, we thank you for Judd, Lord. Continue to keep thine hands upon him, Lord. Continue to bless and touch the Vaughn family, Lord. Have your blessed way. We're so grateful and thankful for Sister Rhonda and the Blacks, Lord. Touch and bless them as well, Lord. Keep that hand upon this campus, Lord. You know all about it, Lord. You know the need thereof. And bless the ministry, Lord. Bless those that are workers and laborers in this ministry, Lord. Have thy blessed way with each and every one, Lord. All that you do for us this evening, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get my ushers up here, sir? But Steve. Dear Lord, once again, I want to thank you for bringing us all here together to worship in your name. I ask that you give Reverend Ledger, uh, bless him tonight as he brings us the message. Uh, please bless this offering uh, for Brother Goodman and the Latin American Ministries. And just thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you've given us. Dear Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. so much, my men. Thank you, guys. For that cheerful heart and cheerful givers in the name of Jesus. One more song from our, from our awesome, awesome song leader, Steve. Let's turn over to page 445.
hearts together tonight, and let's hear the Rock of Ages speak to our hearts tonight through our man of God, Pastor Ledger. Sir? Yeah, no, sir. In my hand, no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Awesome. Well, we're continuing our Bible study in Romans. And by the help of the Lord, we're going to look at Romans chapter 6 tonight. Romans chapter 6. We're going to remain seated for the reading of the word because it's 23 verses. Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse number 1 tonight. Before we begin, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, we've done our best to prepare, but only your blessed Spirit can speak to souls. So give us help, Lord, the anointing of God to preach, touch our hearers to hear and understand. For whatsoever is accomplished for eternity tonight, we'll give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe it was 1980 or 81 that I had the privilege to attend the Hope Sound camp meeting as a brand new Christian. And there I sat under a fellow named Dale Yoakum. And he preached a series of messages on Romans. And I always wished that I had somehow recorded that. Twenty years later, I'm back at Hope Sound at another camp meeting. Brother Dale has gone on to heaven. And I'm sorting through the tapes, cassette tapes, that are on sale in the bookstore. And there's a set of Dale Yoakum's tapes on Romans. The whole set, six of them. Well, when Brother Wooten said, Romans, I said, Lord, this is a hard assignment. The Lord reminded me that I had those tapes. So some of the material you hear tonight will be from his tapes. And some will be from others. But I certainly appreciate how the blessed Holy Spirit has helped me with these lessons. I said something the first night about teach what you know. And after I said that, I had the distinct impression that someone might think I was referring to Brother Jerome or Brother Stephen or Sunday school teacher. I want you to know that's not the case. I was referring to me. That was advice for me, teach what I know. If we have a religious experience in our heart, we can tell others about it. Doesn't matter how old or young we are as a Christian. Yes. Yes. So, Paul asking us a question in Romans chapter six, verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. Well, what in the world is he talking about? Well, we're going to have to back up a couple of verses. Let's look up above that heading in chapter 6 and look at verse number 20 of chapter 5. Paul had just said, Where the law entered, that the offense might abound, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. One of Paul's students, critics, or somebody else listening to him, may have posed this question. Or maybe God just had it come to his mind so he'd write it. Shall we continue in sin 
that grace may abound. Since grace is so great, why, the more we sin, the more grace we get, right? Paul said, wrong. Okay, now we're, we're speaking here about the idea of continuing to sin after we become a believer. This is the first time Paul's ever talked about this. And the first thing he says is, the first part of number 2, verse 2, God forbid. Paul says, certainly not. Horrors! By no means. No, no. Don't even think of that. That's what he means when he said, God forbid. Well, first, what does Paul mean when he says the word sin? Well, Brother Ledger, look at uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Paul says that all that falls short of the glory of God is sin. Oh, really? Maybe we need to turn to uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Well, the first thing Paul says is, for all have sinned. Do we agree here? Yes. Amen. Certainly we can say that all have sinned in the past. This verse says absolutely nothing about everybody must sin in thought, word, and deed every day. I want you to notice that. It only says what we know is true. All have sinned. The Bible says that sinning causes us to come short of the glory of God. Well, uh, yeah, sinning causes us to all to come short of the glory of God. Paul has just used 84 verses to tell us that all men come under the condemnation for sinning. To be short of the glory of God is not a definition of sin. It's a result of sin. It's the result of a sinful life. Now the Bible gives us two main def definitions of what sin is. First is the sins of ignorance. I didn't know better, Lord. And the other is intentional sin. Now, the Bible says that all of those, both of those, both the ones of ignorance and the intentional ones, need forgiveness, need a sacrifice, need something done about them to stop this separation between us and God. Now, John the Beloved said in 1 John, when we walk in the light of the gospel, the blood sacrifice of Christ cleanses us from all sin. That covers all the mistakes and errors of life. Now, the Bible says that in the next life, after what Jesus refers to as the resurrection of the body, we will receive a glorified body. Now, in that glorified body, we will be so perfect that we'll never make another mistake or error. This is one of the things I envied about Jesus. He never had to back up to anybody and say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I overspoke. <laughs> I, I apologize, I, I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to me sound so strong. Well, Brother Ledger, I don't have to do that either. I know, I know, but I do. Paul's talking about willful, sinful choices. Back in 6, verse 1. Shall we continue in our willful, sinful choices that grace may abound. Paul said, what a bunch of nonsense. 
God forbid. Shall we continue to lie or steal or commit adultery? No. It's truly amazing to me how men who ought to know better have twisted the scriptures so that they say we must sin every day when we become followers of Christ. I mean, really, can the devil do any worse than that? Our scripture this evening is the first time Paul talks about continuing in sin. What does he say about that? Well, it would be probably better for us to do our best. No. Or, as much as lieth in you, cut back on your sinning. No. Or, well, we're not perfect, you know. Do the best you can. He didn't say that either. He said, God forbid. Now, in Romans chapter 6, Paul commands the Christians to stop sinning. I want you to notice that. Look at verse 2. God forbid. Verse number 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, and the body of sin might be destroyed, that we henceforth, from now on, We should not serve sin. Verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dead to sin. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign, rule, or be the king of your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Verse 15, what then shall we sin? God forbid. Verse 18, Being then made free from sin. Verse 22, free from sinning. At least nine times Paul admonishes us in the strongest possible language that he could come up with to stop sinning. Now, did God inspire the Apostle Paul? I believe he did. Did he have him write this? Yes, I do. Because God wants Christians to stop sinning. Now, if you don't get anything else out of this tonight, that's that's what I'm hoping will happen. Let's look at some of Paul's arguments proving that sinning needs to stop in Christians. First, verse 2. We're back over there. He says, ye are dead to sin. Now, if I'm dead in this world, they're going to bury me. A few may cry, but I'm not kept around. Nobody comes and asks me my opinion. They can praise me or curse me. It doesn't bother me a bit. I'm dead. They can even cremate me, and I don't feel a bit of pain. I'm dead. Paul said, we are to be dead to sin. Are you getting the picture? Dead means dead. Verse 3, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death. Paul is giving us the reasoning behind the symbol of baptism. When we go under the water to be baptized, that symbolizes dying, being buried in the ground. And when we come up out of the water, that symbolizes raising from the dead to a new life. Now, baptism cannot save you. I remember one guy told me, he said, baptism saved me. I said, please explain yourself. 
He said, while they were baptizing me, I confessed my sins and Jesus saved me. I said, baptism did not save you, sir. Jesus Christ saved you. The baptism is a symbol of that. It's only a symbol of what Christ has done when he saves us by his grace. Verse 4, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. He's still talking about going under the water. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Walk in newness of life. Old things, old habits, old friends, old hangouts pass away. This is the reason that a lot of people are still in trouble is because they haven't forsaken the old life. But they're my friends. I love them. I, I've helped them. They've helped. Listen, if you're going to save your never dying soul, you're going to have to listen to God and listen to the word of God. And dump those old friends and those old acquaintances and all the rest of that. And walk in the newness of life. Verse 5. Verse 5 is a summary. For if we have been planted together, that's buried, planted like a flower is planted, you put it in the ground, in the likeness of his death, Jesus' death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Planted or buried like Christ was buried and in the likeness of his resurrection. Then verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Our old man, our old life of sin, the old person is dead, crucified. Now some theologians think the old man dies when we are saved. And others think he dies when we are sanctified. Either way, it's got to happen. It has to happen. You need to have a new birth and you need to have a new death. We need a birth to the Christ and we need a death to the old life. As long as self-will tries to take control of our body and take that control away from Christ, there's going to be a battle. I believe it was James called him the double-minded man, fighting with himself. Get that old man crucified. Amen. Not swooned, but dead. The body of sin. Here, Paul is describing that sin nature that we inherited from Adam. It must be destroyed. Pray to the Lord, Lord, cleanse my heart of that old flinty, want to have my own way nature. Lord, purify my heart by faith. Lord, sanctify me wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, or completely. Remove from my soul that thing that caused me to be a career sinner, a transgressor, and a rebel. Henceforth, from now on, we should not yield or bow down to or serve sin. Verse number seven, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Ah, oh, Brother Ledger, we got you. Paul said we can't be free from sin until we die. No, he didn't say that. Paul is not referring to physical death here, but to the crucifying of the old life. When Christ truly burns that body of sin out of us, we will be free to stop sinning. Read verses 8 through 10 with me. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. We died with Christ. Truly, if we are a born again Christian, we died with Christ. We now live with him in a spiritual resurrection. Not of the body, but of the spirit. 
Likewise, as Christ rose from the dead, reckon yourselves dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. Now the word reckon as we use it is sometimes misleading because we'll use it in the sense like, well, I think that's probably possible. I reckon it so. But that's not what the word means in the, in the Bible. Reckon is a bookkeeping term. It means to establish by counting or calculation. It's the actual balance that's shown on the books. Run the numbers through the calculator. Because, if Jesus, because of Jesus Christ, everything adds up correctly. And we are actually dead to the old sinful life and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is now actually our Lord and Master. We no longer need to serve the old master of sin. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey, the let, obey it in the lust thereof. Do not allow sin to reign or be king. That's, that's reign, not, not the kind of reign that falls on the ground, but that's the kind of, that a king does, R-E-I-G-H, or R-E-I-G-N. It's the reigning of a king. Do not allow sin to be the king of your mortal body. That's the one we're living in right now. This is the mortal body. He's not talking about some spiritual purple haze somewhere. He's talking about the mortal body we're living in right now. Neither, neither, <laughs> verse 13, neither that you should obey the lust thereof, I'm sorry, verse 12, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Our members, our fingers, our feet, the places we go with our bodies, the things we see, the things we think about the things we hear, the things we say. That's our mortal body. Do not allow our mortal bodies to be used by sin to do evil. But rather, look at verse 13 there, but rather yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you. That means it does not control you any longer. Amen. Ye are not under law, but under grace. Ah, Brother Ledger, here we go. Paul said we're not under the law, so we can toss the Old Testament and the law out the, out the door, right? No, really? What about what Jesus said? Let me quote Jesus. I believe that's in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said, the law says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that if you look upon a woman to lust after her in your heart, you have already committed adultery with her. Well, what then is Paul talking about? What, is he, what does he mean by the law? Well, Paul is talking about outward conduct and the ceremonial laws that the Jews held. So, outwardly, the Jews could live without committing adultery, even though they had, uh, they had porn on their phone. How did that get in there? <laughs> so the cows and the goats and the sheep, the Hebrew writer said their blood could not take away sins. That's why they had to come back every year and do their sacrifices over again. But we're not under that law. We're under grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose blood does atone for our sins. The law is a schoolmaster to lead us on to Christ. 
The law could not help us stop sinning, but it could only show us we're sinners. That's why it's so important to preach the Old Testament. And that's why Paul said the law was weak. Not that the law didn't have any strength, but that the law was weak in that it could not help the believers to live right. It only told them they were wrong. What the law could not do, Jesus can do. The one thing the law cannot do is stop us from sinning. And the one thing Jesus can do is stop us from sinning. Verse 15, what then? Shall we sin? Because we're not under the law, but under grace. What did Paul say? God forbid, again. He said, how absurd to think we can continue to sin just because we're under grace. Don't you know? Don't you know? Verse 16, know ye not that in whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You are a slave to the master you obey. The question is, is God your master? Well, then you'll obey him. Is sin your master? You obey him. Verse 17, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Ye were, ye were the slave of sin. But you have obeyed God from your heart the doctrine you were taught. Well, what is that? That means that you heard that you must be born again. You heard that you had to have your sins forgiven. You recognized the truth of this and went to Christ and begged him to forgive you for all your sins, and he did it. You confessed your sins to Christ. He's forgiven you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. After the infirmity of our flesh. I think I'll stop right here and just say something. An infirmity is not a sin. And a sin is not an infirmity. Paul is not speaking here about any kind of sinful activity. What he's talking about is, he said, I'm using metaphors and examples from life to illustrate spiritual things to you. Because I know you are new to Christianity and need these helps. Where is that? I didn't put a note there. All right, well, let's just go on. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. <laughs> when ye were, past tense, in sin, you didn't do anything right. Oh, well, no, wait a minute, Brother Ledger. I, I was a... I was a really, I mean, I was a good sinner. I, I, I helped people sometimes and gave them money, and, and I did a lot of good things. The Bible says that even the good things we do as a sinner don't get us anywhere because they're always done for the wrong motive. They're not done for the glory of God, but it's usually to glorify self. But now, but now, Yield your body to works of righteousness and holiness. Paul said, before when you were sinning, what fruit had ye? In other words, what was the, the spiritual results of a sinful life? Whoa, could we write a book on that here at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission? 
I think one of the main regrets that I have heard from people over the years who became Christians, the main regret was, why didn't I do this earlier? I'd have saved myself so much grief. The wages of sin, the payment for sin, is death. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin, I know you're hard, tired of hearing that, but he keeps saying it, and become the servants of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You're changed, you're transformed. You became the servants of God, and so now your fruit is holiness and the end of your life is everlasting. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the conclusion of Paul's chapter. Sin, read, sin leads to death, no exceptions. Amen. Maybe the Marlboro man didn't die of cancer and live to be 95. It still didn't change anything. The wages of sin is still death. But the gift of God... Through Jesus Christ is everlasting life. That concludes this chapter this evening. It comes to my mind again, in closing, that God has offered so much misery and pain if we continue in sin and rebellion against him and offers so much joy and pleasure and long life if we'll just serve him. You would think everybody that had any sense at all would rush to Christ and get out of the old sin business. Amen? Amen. Thank you for your attention. Let's stand together. As you know, this altar is always open. The Holy Spirit's been speaking to you this evening. We want you to come and pray. We'll stay and pray with you. We can't pray you in, but we can sure pray with you. Anybody want to seek the Lord tonight? Anybody else? Those that know how to pray, let's gather at the altar. And Brother Wooten, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Our Father, we thank you again tonight for this tremendous message. Lord, we thank you so much for thy word. It's steadfast and sure. It leads us to everlasting life. Father, let the words that were spoken tonight drill themselves into every man's heart and mind. We pray that they might come to the realization they need to be saved. They need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Help us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.